Far from the crowded streets of New York and Boston, seven years before the start of the Civil War, a hotel opened for business along a quiet bend of the Saranac River. People could come up from Lower Saranac Lake, from the village of Saranac Lake, and up through the Lower Saranac Lake, the river, through Round Lake, and up here, and land here, and then it's a mere quarter of a mile carry to Upper Saranac Lake. And once they were there, they could go north or they could go into the Racket River and head down to Long Lake. And so it was a real thoroughfare and going way, way back. The hotel became known as Bartlett's. It provided not only beds and meals, but wagon service. For 50 cents, a boat would be hauled up or down the carry trail between the upper and middle Saranac Lakes. Virgil uh, loved animals. And I think Caroline was willing to humor him in that regard. So um, he had, for one thing, he had a pet otter. And who knows if he actually kept the otter in an enclave here or if that otter just came out of the water and came up. But he often had a bucket with trout in it and the otter would slither up out of the river and he'd pick a, a trout up and throw and the otter would catch it and then head back down into the river. That's my image anyway. Yeah, well, but, the guests must have loved yeah, that. Yeah, they would have loved that. Carolyn, where did she come from, Fran? Um, Caroline was a school teacher in Jay, New York. And I think that is where Virgil met her. And uh, from there, they ended up coming to Saranac Lake and, um, and running the Miller House. They lived a pretty nice life in a way. I mean, they were dressed quite finely from time to time. Mrs. Bartlett loved to go shopping and she had fine clothes, um, but that did not ever detract from her ability to um, spread a famous table. I mean, people came from all over just to come to have dinner at Mrs. Bartlett's. There was a Mrs. Dunning who came for dinner with Estella Martin, who was the daughter-in-law of William Martin, who had built the hotel. So Estella Martin and Mrs. Dunning got in the rowboat, and they were coming across Round Lake. And I bet it was an east wind and very rough that particular day. And the water was splashing in. And Mrs. Dunning said to Estella, it's worth it if I can just have a meal of Mrs. Bartlett's brown bread. Good food and good fishing brought guests to Bartlett's from far and wide. The water was their highway. The water was their north way. <laughs> so from Martin's Hotel in Lower Saranac Lake, um, in the very first days, because this started in 1854, was when Virgil and Caroline started their business out here, the sportsman's home. They would get in guide boats or canoes and be paddled up by guides all the way up here. And it's, that's a total of about 15 miles paddling. The guides who worked the Saranac Lakes were local men who knew how to row boats in all weather and keep their clients happy. Big lake trout made for good eating and tall stories, stories that kept guests such as Dr. James Romaine of Keysville coming back year after year. They were pretty self-sufficient. The whole hillside there was pretty much denuded so that they could have the lumber to build these houses and buildings that they had. And they had gardens and they had animals. They had the woods, you know, they had everything that the woods could give them in terms of venison and other kinds of meat. That's right, no game laws in those days. No game and laws, no. their milk and, ven and milk and butter and... Yes. When we walk down in this field, Ed, I can see this house. I can imagine the people bustling around here and the guides and the dogs running around and people coming down the hill from uh, a trip to Upper Saranac Lake and Virgil coming down and meeting them with his high, thin, nasal voice, but his boisterous manner and then coming up onto the porch. And here's Caroline standing there in a a beautiful dress, but with her sleeves rolled up because she's just come from the kitchen. The aromas of home cooking are gone from the carry, but with imagination and a deep breath, they can be brought to mind. I think Virgil Bartlett may have been ill starting around 1880, uh, 1881. Um, and he ended up dying, not here, but in Os Sable Forks in 1884, and that's where he's buried in the Fairview Cemetery. So it, it had been 30 years that they'd been here, and here was Caroline, left with 
a sportsman's home with accommodations for 50 people, guides, animals, gardens, the whole thing. She had all, all this responsibility. So she kept running it, but she ended up after a couple of years leasing it. And by 1888, she had moved to Glens Falls with her niece, Carrie. Upper Saranac Lake's waters poured into Round Lake, or Middle Saranac, as they always had, yet Bartlett's, as guests had known and loved the hotel, was no more. I am working on a book about this place and about my life here and my coming here. So it's a combination, it's kind of an interweaving of my story and weaving into that the whole history going back to 1854 in Virgil Bartlett. Time passes, Adirondack rains fall, rivers run. No one living today can remember the warm welcome travelers received at Bartlett's, yet the place is not forgotten. The people survive because we get to tell their stories. Yeah. And I think that's the really important thing.